Hi poetry lovers, welcome to my channel Bella Poetry. My name is Bella and I love beautiful poetry. In this segment we will discuss a very interesting life of another Victorian poet, female poet, Elizabeth Sidal. Elizabeth Sidal was born on July 25, 1829 in central London. Her parents, Charles Sidal and Elizabeth uh, Evans, had eight children all together. Elizabeth was a third child. She, is, she had two older siblings and five younger siblings. Lydia, her sister, was her best friend and the closest from all the siblings to her. The family was, uh, the parents were of English and Welsh descent. Elizabeth got an ordinary education. Her family was a working family. They didn't have a lot of money. Elizabeth had to actually work uh, from um, when she became a, teen a teenager um, up to the age of 20. She worked in a hat store and she received a salary of 24 pounds a year. The conditions in the store were not very good and her mother was always worried about her that it would affect her health because Elizabeth was fragile and sickly. Well, we're now at 1849 and we're going to kind of transport ourselves to another scene. We're in the studio of pre-Raphaelite artists. There were seven artists all of them attended the London Royal Academy of Art and they worked together and they painted together and two of them, Dante Rossetti and uh, his friend William Holden were sitting in the studio painting when suddenly another friend of theirs, an artist, burst into the room and with the excitement in his voice announced, and I will quote him, you fellows can tell what a stupendously beautiful creature I have found. She's like a queen, magnificently tall. And he was talking about Elizabeth Sidal that he just met. Uh, Elizabeth Sidal was a beautiful woman, but her beauty was quite unconventional. She was very thin and pale looking. She had a lot of beautiful mane of red hair and uh, she was definitely very attractive but by the beauty standards of that time women with more curvaceous figures and maybe shorter were considered sexy she was not according to the beauty standard considered sexy but she definitely influenced and even changed the beauty standards of that times so the artists, all the artists from the pre-Raphaelite society were so excited that they finally got a model. But they needed first to convince Elizabeth's mother to allow her to model. In 19th century England, modeling was equal to prostitution. It was not considered an honorable thing to do. So Deverell decided to send his own mother, who was very traditional and respectable, to talk to Elizabeth's mother to convince her to allow Elizabeth to model for the pre-Raphaelite artists. And uh, she managed to convince Elizabeth. The um, main reason was, as I said before, that the mother was worried about Elizabeth's health because Elizabeth was very frail. But the other reason or the incentive for her decision to allow Elizabeth to model was money. Uh, the uh, society, the, the group, gave Elizabeth a stipend of 150 pounds a year. And if you remember, she was earning 24 pounds a year. So that was a big, big difference. In the beginning, Elizabeth worked uh, half time in the store and half time as a model. So she posed for a few artists and she posed for John Millet's very famous uh, painting called Ophelia. She's lying 
in the river surrounded by flowers. For this painting, she had to pose for hours lying in a tub filled with water. Uh, John Millais, he put uh, oil lamps underneath the tub to keep the water warm, but the, the oil uh, lamps went out and the water became freezing. Elizabeth didn't want to interrupt the session, and so she silently suffered lying in the freezing water, and the following day she became very sick with pneumonia. Elizabeth's father became angry with Millet and he threatened to sue him in court unless he paid her doctor's bills, and Millet agreed. After that, Elizabeth started to pose for Dante Rosati. The two fell in love. They were both very young and a very attractive couple, and they were totally head over heels with each other. Um, they would not stay apart. They began to be socially uh, reclusive. They didn't want to spend time with their friends. All they wanted is to be with each other in the beginning. And Dante was obsessed with Elizabeth. He ske uh, did sketches of her, thousands of sketches in pencil of her sitting down, writing, reading, painting, and he also wrote romantic poetry for her. He used to call her different pet names in his letters, like a Dove or Gog or Gogham and other names and uh, their love was really very special. In 1852 um, the couple got engaged but Dante refused to marry Elizabeth. They were like maybe two years into their relationship. Dante was very very jealous. He wouldn't allow her to sit for any other artist. At the same time, he was a big philanderer and he had numerous affairs. Uh, Elizabeth knew about these affairs and it caused her a lot of grief and distress. Uh, in, 19, in 1854, Elizabeth st uh, started to study art with Dante Rossetti and she became a wonderful artist in her own um, in her own right. The fellow uh, pre-Raphaelites called her a genius because her paintings were really beautiful considering that she didn't attend an art academy like the rest of them. And in 1857, she was the only female to exhibit her paintings at the beautiful exhibition given by the artists of the pre-Raphaelite society. And she, her paintings were very successful. But at that time, she started to get kind of annoyed, sick of Dante. Dante promised to marry her, but although they got engaged in 1851, he still would not marry her for different reasons. That time when Elizabeth got sick with pneumonia, she started taking opium and she became addicted to it. At that time, opium was a pain reliever, it was a sleep aid, and it um, also calmed uh, people's nerves down. And it worked for Elizabeth. And she became, slowly, slowly, she became really addicted to it. Dante, as I said before, was also very unfaithful to her. And on top of everything, his two sisters were very critical of Elizabeth and didn't want Dante to marry her because she was from a working class and not from the higher society like them. Um, Elizabeth decided she needed to clear her head and she went to visit her family and stay with them in Sheffield. Uh, she met a young guy there and he actually liked her a lot and he proposed to her, but she declined his proposal saying that she was engaged, although the relationship between her and Dante started to fizzle out, although she always loved him till her last breath. And uh, she suddenly disappeared in 1858 until 1860. Nobody knew where Elizabeth uh, went. But one day, Dante received very troubling news. He heard that Elizabeth was dangerously ill. He rushed to Sheffield, 
and he by her bed he proposed to her again they got married in a church she was so weak that he had to carry her to church because she couldn't walk on her own so they got married elizabeth started to feel much better i think a lot of her ailments were caused by her emotional state because she was simply heartbroken and it affected her um her health terribly and um, worsen her addiction to opium. Uh, the happy couple, they had very happy few months. They went on their honeymoon to Paris. They even picked up two stray dogs from the street and brought them, brought them back home as their pets. Elizabeth found out upon her return that she was pregnant. And in May uh, 1862, she gave birth to a stillborn daughter. Uh, she became very, very depressed. It was a huge tragedy for her and it was hard for her to really recover from it fully. Um, she also had doubts about faithfulness of Dante. Her, his friends tried to convince Elizabeth that he was loyal to her, but Elizabeth didn't trust them. One night on February 10th, 1862, the couple went out to dinner. When they returned home, Elizabeth went to bed with a bottle of uh, opium, as she did every night, and she drank half a bottle, which was the regular portion that she took before she went to sleep as a sleep aid to help her sleep. Um, Dante went to teach a night class at the Working Men Club, working men's club. Uh, by the way, Elizabeth was pregnant again at that time. When he came home after the class, he found her in very deep sleep and he noticed that the bottle of opium was empty. By her side, there was a note, a suicide note that Elizabeth banned for Dante. He destroyed, he burned the note because he wanted her to get a Christian burial. And he didn't want anybody to know that she actually committed suicide. She was only 32 years old. Um, they tried to revive her. He called the landlady, they brought the doctors, but Elizabeth Sidal was pronounced dead in the early hours of February 11, 1860. Uh, at her funeral, Dante put a book of his poems. He only had one copy of this book. He put it in her grave, in her coffin. Um, he was truly grief-stricken. He loved her in spite of all his infidelities. He loved this woman a lot. And her loss was very traumatic for him. But seven years later, in 1869, he decided to exhume Elizabeth's body and retrieve the booklet with poems. He didn't want to do it on his own, so he asked his friend, Charles Howell, to do it for him. Charles went to the cemetery. She was buried at Highgate Cemetery. He opened the coffin and he retrieved the booklet with poems and returned it to Dante. Dante asked him how did she look and Charles Howell told him that she looked beautiful, that her hair grew even longer and it crowned her face that was white and pretty and she didn't change at all which obviously was a lie because she, lied, uh, she lay in the ground for uh, seven years. But from this testimony of Charles Howell uh, emerged a legend about Elizabeth as if she wasn't uh, dead at all and it created cultish uh, behavior around her um, image. So um, Dante Rossetti published the book of poetry. Uh, he, it was very successful. It was published to a great acclaim. And that was the end of this beautiful but very tragic love story.
and very tragic story because Elizabeth was a woman with tremendous potential, a wonderful artist, a great poet, and she had a lot of promise and unfortunately all of it came to an end um, on that fateful night on February 10th, 1862. I will read to you a couple of uh, quotes by Elizabeth Sedal that are very telling of her relationship with Dante. I sit in thy shadow, but not alone. And the second quote is a little poem. All changes pass me like a dream. I neither sing nor pray, and though are like the poisonous tree that stole my life away. We will also read a poem called Dead Love. This poem talks about love and how fragile and flaky it is in her eyes. Dead Love. Oh, never weep for love that's dead, since love is seldom true, but changes his passion from blue to red, from brightest red to blue. And love was born to an early death, and it's so seldom true. Then harbor no smile on your bunny face to win the deepest sigh, the fairest words on truest lips pass on and surely die. And you will stand alone, my dear, when wintry winds draw nigh. Sweet, never weep for what cannot be, for this God has not given. If the merest dream of love were true, then, sweet, we should be in heaven. And this is only earth, my dear, where true love is not given. And the second poem is called Early Death. And I think it was written when, uh, during those moments when she was extremely depressed, not feeling well, and desperate. Oh, grieve not with thy bitter tears, the life that passes fast. The gates of heaven will open wide and take me in at last. Then sit down meekly at my side and watch my young life flee. Then solemn peace of holy death come quickly unto thee. But true love, seek me in the throng of spirits floating past, and I will take thee by the hands and know thee mine at last. Beautiful poetry. Uh, and this poetry bring a, brings us to the end of this segment. Thank you very much for visiting my channel. Please visit us again. In our next segment, we will talk about a very fascinating and scandalous life of another 19th century female poet, um, Mary Shelley. Please don't forget to like the segment. You can comment. I will uh, welcome your comments and subscribe, push the subscribe button so you will continue to receive more segments of Bella Poetry. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.